We're gonna review the flail chest. Now remember the definition of a flail chest segment is two or more contiguous ribs, they have to be next to each other, that are broken in at least two places. And what this creates is a loss of integrity of the thoracic cage. Now as it pertains to breathing, remember the lungs adhere to the inside of the chest, right inside the thoracic cavity there, and ultimately they're attached to the ribs through other tissue, but they're adhered to that cage. If there's a loss of integrity in the cage during inhalation, during negative pressure, when the patient breathes in, there's nothing to hold that out. That segment is free and it will suck right into the chest under that negative pressure. When the patient exhales and the pressure comes up, that segment is actually gonna be blown out away from the chest. So there's nothing to hold it here. So what's the big problem with a flail segment? Why do we care? The rib fractures, not so much, right? If you count them up, what do you got? 250, 300, 400 cc's of blood loss. So not a whole lot with the fractures there. Hypoventilation, because that lung section is no longer allowed to inflate, it, it can't exchange gases. It can't take in oxygen, can't blow off CO2. So we're gonna have a shunt there. That area of the lung is no longer working. Now, aside from the orthopedic stuff, the ribs, that's really not the big concern. It's the underlying tissue damage, the pulmonary contusion, the bleeding lung. That's really uh, the problem and our concern in a flail segment is the damage to the underlying tissue. So what's our strategy in the field? We have a patient uh, was in an auto accident, which is one of the most common causes of a flail segment, or you know, the old you didn't hear me the first time with a baseball bat. Um, and you can have a flail segment. Now remember, there's a pressure gradient going on. When the patient inhales, it's negative pressure. It's gonna suck that chest wall in. When they exhale, it's gonna push it back out. So we could externally put a pad over there or stabilize it, at least from coming out, right? We could do that. That's one option. And if the patient's on the ground, we're gonna lay that affected side down. Another option, if we think about it, might be BiPAP, right? a little pressure support on the way in. So the patient does not create that negative pressure and suck that flail segment in. So if we're able to dial in a really nice BiPAP so that during exhalation, they're not blowing out, but during inhalation, they're not sucking that flail segment back in. Again, the fix for this is the operating room. That's our destination in the field. But we want to ensure that we can at least try to ventilate that lung between uh, the field and the time we get them to the uh, emergency department and try to stabilize it and prevent further injury. Again, if your protocols uh, allow for it, consider BiPAP and external stabilization.